So today I'm here with Brian and we're going to talk about how to calibrate the simple tracker. So go ahead, Brian, take it away. Uh, yeah, well, what we've done is in the past, we've kind of got some issues with people having trouble calibrating these. So we've come up with a new method that we're going to show you today. And it's uh, much simpler than the old method. And hopefully that helps everybody out. OK, so describe it. How are we going to do that? Uh, basically, what we're going to do is a six point calibration on this, which is the same thing that we used to do. Um, and I, most of you who use these probably remember that we used to have you spin it all kinds of different ways and this way and that way. And what we're going to do first is we're going to show you uh, some slides about what we're trying to calibrate. And that'll make it a lot clearer for when we actually do calibrate it, you'll understand what we're doing and why we're doing it. And you will see that it will be much simpler than the old method. Okay. So we're going to go and kind of show you some slides here and we'll be right back to calibrate. Okay. Well, now what we're going to do before we get to the actual calibration part of the, of the simple trackers, we're going to go through some of the theory of why we need to calibrate it and, uh, and uh, the methods that we're going to going to use. Um, so first off, we're going to talk about the sensors. This device has MEM sensors in it, which a lot of you have probably heard of, and it stands for Miniature Electrical Mechanical Sensors. They make them in different kinds. You can get accelerometers, gyroscopes, which interestingly are an inertial sensor, while accelerometers aren't, and magnetometers, which can be inertial sensors. And then there's other types also, but this device has only these top three in it. We don't have to worry about calibration on accelerometers or gyros. Those are pretty good. But unfortunately, for this type of sensor, the magnetometers are always off um, and you can't get make good compasses out of them in, unless you do some calibration to these devices. So what would end up happening is if you took one of these three axis sensors, these are all three axis sensors, and you just started spinning it in a circle, a sphere, like uh, kind of our original calibration procedure was, you would end up with um, you would end up with a, a, a 360 degree solid sphere that's about an XYZ coordinate. And as you'll notice here, this sphere is not centered on these axes, the X, Y, and Z axes. So that is what we're going to try to calibrate. We need to get this sphere onto the center of the axes. And typically what happens with magnetic sensors is this sphere won't be round either. It'll be more of an egg shaped one. I kind of have a round one drawn here, but in reality, it would be more egg shaped and it, they're off the axis. They're all over the place on this 3D space. Um, so in order to calibrate them, what we do is we do this hard math algorithm here. Now, the good news is, is we don't have to, you guys don't have to do all this. But what you do is you take your raw magnetic readings and you multiply them by a matrix that's a three by three matrix. And the good news is, is the bottom half of the matrix is all zeros. And then to that result, you add some offsets to it. And these are your corrected values then, which you can use to make a compass. Now, fortunately for you guys, this part we don't have to do. All we have to do is find the offsets for all three axes. Um, because what this matrix here does is it's the one that corrects the egg shape. These over here are what center it onto the X, Y, Z axis. So it's really not as complicated as it looks. So instead of doing a 3D one, what I have here is a picture of uh, just a slice through it on the X, Y axis. And you can see that the, that the circle on the X, Y axis is not centered. Um, so what we need to find is we need to find these points, this one, this one, this one, and this one. And then on the Z axis, there's two more. That's how come we call it a six point calibration. And these are the maximums the sensor will output its maximums when it is aligned with the magnetic field or its minimum if it's on the other side. And so in order to find these, we need to align the surfaces of this box with the magnetic field. And then we can get like X1 and X2 and we can figure out how to shift this over until it's centered on this axis, centered on the Y axis. This one's pretty, pretty good on the Y axis now and also centered in the Z direction. And the way we're going to do that is you need to know where the magnetic field is coming into the Earth or exiting the Earth, whichever hemisphere you're in. And so here's a plot. You can get these off the Internet, a little upside down here. But this is uh, 
magnetic inclination angle map and it shows you the whole world and we're right over here in the United States and you can see that our inclination angle is somewhere between uh, 40 and 50 and 60 degrees something like that and that is measured from the surface of the earth so if we had uh, uh, this is just a little model of the magnetic field and if we said this is the surface of the earth right here the magnetic fields coming in at an angle about like that okay about 60 70 degrees we're not gonna get protractors out and measure all this or anything else we don't necessarily need to do that now that the compass in this in this device it is a three-axis compass and it is the, the the X Y and Z are aligned with the faces of this the, there's a board in here a circuit board that's flat the box is flat and so the three axes that we need to measure and find their maximum and minimums are this side, this side, the top, the bottom, and the two sides. Okay, and so all we have to do to calibrate this thing is align these faces with that magnetic field on that side, and then we'll align it on this side and this side, and then we'll get those points on those circles that we need to center, center the calibration procedure. So you don't really have to spin it and flip it all over, but if you do, do spin it and flip it all over, the device will find those points for you if you want to do it the old method. Uh, but really all you need to do is tip the faces to where the magnetic field is, and it's pretty constant over the whole United States. It's going to be coming in at an angle about like this, and it comes from the south and goes into the north, uh, which actually makes the North Pole a south magnetic pole. Okay, so that's all we're going to do to calibrate this thing. Now, we didn't change the calibration procedure in this device. Uh, so when we push the button on the back when we're in one of the two tracking modes, either the GPS coordinates or the compass mode, it'll start beeping a whole bunch of times. That's when we want to start tipping this into the magnetic field on all the sides. Okay, all these beeps through the middle, we don't really care about those anymore. All, all you need to pay attention to is when it gets to the last beeps, the end of the calibration where it starts beeping again, we want to hold it flat and face it north. And then once it stops beeping, your simple tracker will be calibrated. Okay, so now we're ready to calibrate. So go ahead and show us how to calibrate, Brian. All right, to use this new method that we've talked about in the previous slides, uh, this tracker, I don't know if you can see it right now, it has a local GPS lock. However, we don't have a rocket set up anywhere, so we're not gonna get packets from the rocket to track anything. But what we can do when it says it's waiting for a rocket lock, we, we can push the button on the back, and I'm just using a little piece of wire here, and you'll hear it beep, and then it actually skips past waiting for rockets and goes into compass mode, which is probably a little difficult to see out here. But now it's in the regular mode where you could track your rocket or you could do the turnover thing and get the GPS coordinates, either of those. If you are in either of those two screens, then if you push the button on the back, it will go into calibration mode. Now, as we talked about the in the slides, what we need to know when we're calibrating this is where the magnetic field of the Earth is coming in and or going out if you're in the Southern Hemisphere. And we checked it out here, and this direction here is north, and that direction there is south. So that means that the magnetic field here where we're at, if we look at our inclination map, and all across the United States, it's pretty much the same, but the field's gonna be coming in at an angle about like this right here. Uh, it's a 60, 50, 60 degree angle up from the surface of the earth. And so what we need to do is we need to align each side of this, we're doing a six point calibration, we need to align each side of this box with the magnetic field and we will get the maximum or the minimum values we need to calibrate the compass in this. So I'm gonna go ahead and push the button on this and calibrate it. And as we talked before about the beeps in this thing, we used to have you turn directions and everything else when it was beeping. We're not gonna do that anymore. When I first push the button on this, it is going to start beeping for about 10, 12 seconds or something like that and then it'll stop beeping and beep every 10 seconds after that, but only one time. The only one we really care about is the end beeps. Once it gets to the end and it's done calibrating, we're gonna have to face it to the north like we did before, and we'll know when to do that when it starts continually beeping again, and then we just hold it facing north. So I'm gonna go ahead and try it on this one, 
and it, you can actually go a lot faster, but we haven't changed the calibration routine in this. So it, we're gonna have a lot of extra time. So I just heard it beep. So now it's gonna go into calibration mode. It says compass calibrating on there and it's beeping. So since we know here's the magnetic field, all we have to do is face this face and kind of rock it around a little bit. We're not going to set up any, you know, complicated angle measurement stuff. We kind of, you can tell. Okay, and so we're just going to kind of rock it around on this side into the magnetic field. We're going to turn it and do the side here. And we'll just rock it around into the magnetic field. We're going to do the back, rock it around into the magnetic field on all six sides. It's a six point calibration. Okay, and then we have to do this surface and this surface also. Those are the x-axis, and the easiest way to do those is just kind of spin it in little circles here. And if you keep it aligned with this, then you'll be getting the values that we need to calibrate it. Okay, now that would be all the spinning you need to do to calibrate this. But now we have to wait until we hear the beeps start going continuous again. And, you know, if you're bored, you can keep doing it a little more on each side. You don't really have to. But uh, what's important is that you get the faces of these sides kind of lined up with the magnetic field. And that's all we really need to do instead of all the spinning and everything. Now it's I hear it beep a few times, so we'll just wait until it starts doing its a lot of beeps again at the end. Um, it usually takes about a minute, a minute and a half to get to that point. Yes, okay. about a minute and a half. And as you can see, if, if I'm not spinning at all over the place, then now here it is, I can hear it beeping. So what I'm going to have to do is hold it flat with the screen facing up and face it north. And once it stops beeping, it will be calibrated and it'll go back into tracking mode. There, it's, it's done. So now we have a calibrated simple tracker that was a lot easier than all the spinning and twisting and everything else that we had to do with the old method. Okay, well that sounds pretty simple. Yeah. And one way you can check to see if you're right is you can put it in the compass mode, which it's in now, and face it north, and the arrow should be pointing north, and the north indicator should be north. And then if you turn 90 degrees, you should be able to get it to go, you know, west and turn this way, and you can see it goes south. This one's calibrated really well, you can see. Well, I don't know if you can see, but... <laughs> I can <And> see. <laughs> yeah. You can see it's on the, on the lines there. We turn it this way it's on the line there if we turn it this way it's on that way if we turn it this way it's pointing north that way so that's the whole calibration procedure then and then you'll actually be able to track to your rockets a lot better if you get a good good calibration okay well thank you brian and, uh, yeah that's the simple tracker calibration procedure the new one <laughs>